Is Pluto a planet or is it not? Why does this tiny world spark so much controversy and confusion? Could everything you thought you knew about Pluto actually be wrong? For decades, Pluto was celebrated as the ninth planet in our solar system. Then, in 2006, scientists stripped it of its planetary title, leaving many people angry, confused, and asking, why? Did Pluto really deserve to be demoted? Or is this just an example of science being too strict for its own good? And here's the bigger question. If Pluto is not a planet, what exactly is it? Did scientists get it right? Or are they just complicating the way we understand the universe? Today, we're shedding light on the truth about Pluto. We'll break down the misconceptions, look into its history, and reveal why this distant, icy world remains at the center of one of astronomy's greatest debates. Are you ready to challenge what you think you know? Let's get started. Pluto is the largest known dwarf planet in the solar system and used to be considered the ninth and most distant planet from the Sun. The strange world is located in the Kuiper Belt, a zone beyond the orbit of Neptune, brimming with hundreds of thousands of rocky, icy bodies, each larger than 62 miles, 100 kilometers, across as well as one trillion or more comets. Pluto stopped being a planet in 2006 when it was reclassified as a dwarf planet, a demotion that attracted controversy and stirred debate in the scientific community and among the general public. Pluto was eventually discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh at the Lowell Observatory, based on predictions by Lowell and other astronomers. Pluto got its name from 11-year-old Venetia Burney of Oxford, England, who suggested to her grandfather that the New World get its name from the Roman god of the underworld. Her grandfather then passed the name on to Lowell Observatory. The name also honors Percival Lowell, whose initials are the first two letters of Pluto. Here comes the big question. Why is Pluto no longer considered a planet? For a long time, we thought Pluto was unique in the Kuiper Belt. But as astronomers discovered more and more about the Kuiper Belt and the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, we learned that there are lots of objects like Pluto, more like Pluto in some ways, then Pluto is like the other planets. Finding all these new objects, it became necessary for astronomers to get more specific about what we mean by the word planet and figure out which category Pluto fit into. The three rules astronomers of the International Astronomical Union came up with to define a planet are, the object must orbit the sun, the object must be massive enough to be roughly spherical, and the object must have cleared its orbit of any objects of comparable mass to its own. That is, it must be gravitationally dominant in its orbit. Pluto satisfies the first two of these criteria, but not the third. Even one of its own moons, Karen, is about half of Pluto's size. So rather than being the runt of the planet group, Pluto is now the king of the dwarf planet group. However, misconceptions about this dwarf planet persist often fueled by outdated information or lack of understanding. These are some common misconceptions about Pluto. Myth 1. Pluto is not a planet. This is perhaps the most widely known misconception about Pluto. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, IAU, redefined the definition of a planet. To be classified as a planet, a celestial body must meet three criteria. It must orbit the sun, it must have enough gravity to pull itself into a nearly round shape. It must have cleared its neighborhood around its orbit of other objects. Pluto fails to meet the third criterion. It shares its orbital space with other icy bodies in the Kuiper Belt. Therefore, the IAU reclassified Pluto as a dwarf planet. Myth 2. Pluto is very dark. While Pluto's surface is covered in nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide ice, it doesn't necessarily mean it's dark. The color of Pluto's surface is actually a reddish brown, similar to the color of rust. This color is caused by the interaction of sunlight with methane on Pluto's surface, creating a complex chemical reaction that results in the formation of reddish brown compounds. Myth three, Pluto is too small to be interesting. Pluto may be smaller than Earth's moon, but it's far from uninteresting. It has a diverse and complex surface, with mountains, plains, 
and even a possible subsurface ocean. Pluto also has five moons, including Charon, which is so large that it's often considered a binary system with Pluto. Myth four, we know everything about Pluto. While the New Horizons spacecraft provided us with a wealth of information about Pluto, there's still much we don't know. The spacecraft's flyby in 2015 was just a brief glimpse into this distant world. There are still many mysteries about Pluto's atmosphere, geology, and internal structure that remain unsolved. Myth five, it's impossible to see Pluto from Earth. While it's true that Pluto is too small and faint to be seen with the naked eye, it can be observed with powerful telescopes. Even amateur astronomers can see Pluto using a good telescope and a detailed star chart. Misconceptions about Pluto persist due to a combination of factors that span education, media, and the complexities of scientific classification. In schools, the solar system is often taught in simplified terms, presenting a fixed list of planets. Pluto was long included as the ninth planet without much nuance. And once people learn something early on, it's hard to shift their perspective, even when new scientific evidence emerges. Pluto has been a beloved figure in books, movies, and even cartoons. This cultural attachment makes the idea of demoting Pluto emotionally charged for many. Example, Disney's dog Pluto was named after the planet, further cementing its place in public consciousness. Headlines often simplify or exaggerate scientific discoveries, leading to misunderstandings about why Pluto is reclassified. Science evolves as new information is discovered. The definition of a planet changed in 2006, when the IAU introduced criteria that Pluto didn't meet. However, many people still adhere to outdated definitions. Moreover, not everyone follows updates in astronomy, so they may not understand the reasons behind the reclassification. For decades, people grew up thinking of Pluto as the ninth planet. Its demotion felt personal to some, sparking emotional debates that overshadowed scientific reasoning. Assigning human-like traits to celestial bodies, e.g. calling Pluto the little planet that could, fosters a sense of empathy and resistance to change. However, misconceptions about Pluto endure because of the interplay between early education, cultural narratives, and the complexities of evolving scientific knowledge. Bridging this gap requires better science communication, ongoing public engagement, and a willingness to embrace change in our understanding of the universe. Pluto, despite its reclassification as a dwarf planet, remains a fascinating and enigmatic object in our solar system. By debunking common misconceptions, we can gain a better understanding of this distant world and appreciate its unique characteristics. As technology advances, we can expect to learn even more about Pluto in the years to come. Pluto remained alone at the edge of the solar system for decades. Throughout the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and most of the 70s, Pluto was all that was known beyond Neptune. It was simultaneously an object of wonder and a mystery, whose very existence begged the question, what else is out there beyond the last gas giant? As it turned out, there was an entire suite of objects quite similar to Pluto, the Kuiper Belt. More than 1,000 Pluto-like objects are known to exist within it, and the total number of distant, miniature icy worlds may wind up exceeding 100,000 when all is said and done. Although Pluto is still one of the largest and most massive, it no longer has the same mystique it once did. After all, it spent 48 years as the only known non-cometary object beyond Neptune. It was originally thought to be comparable in mass to Earth, yet is now known to be just 0.2% of our planet's mass. And it's since been superseded in all aspects, mass, size, and distance from the sun. But it's completely understandable why our sympathies for Pluto run so strong. It's a small, almost insignificant body in all aspects. Compared to the titans of our solar system, it's barely noticeable. Its chilly, icy distance makes it incredibly hard to study. And yet perhaps that very aspect of it piques our interest. The New Horizons mission, which flew by Pluto in 2015, unveiled a world far more complex than anyone had imagined. 
Its surface features towering ice mountains, vast plains of nitrogen ice, and evidence of possible subsurface oceans. Pluto even has a thin atmosphere that undergoes seasonal changes. These discoveries have provided invaluable insights into the geology and climate of distant celestial bodies, challenging our understanding of planetary formation and evolution. We're going to learn things about Pluto, its properties, its environment, its atmosphere, and its surface that we most likely never imagined. And in doing so, we'll have our first in-depth understanding of what the most common type of planet-like object in the universe is composed of, and of the solar system beyond Neptune. Few celestial bodies have sparked as much public debate as Pluto. When it was reclassified in 2006, it ignited a wave of public sentiment, with many advocating for Pluto's reinstatement as a planet. Pluto's status has become a cultural touchstone, symbolizing our emotional connection to space exploration and our desire to classify and understand the universe. This ongoing debate keeps Pluto in the spotlight, fostering widespread interest in astronomy. Pluto's reclassification serves as a powerful teaching moment about the nature of science. It highlights how scientific knowledge evolves as we gather more data and refine our definitions. By studying Pluto's case, students and the public alike learn that science is a dynamic process, not a set of unchanging facts. This helps demystify the scientific method and encourages critical thinking. Pluto has long been the subject of fascination and misunderstanding. Many believe it has always been the ninth planet, was downgraded purely due to its small size, or is an insignificant celestial body. In reality, Pluto's classification has evolved with our understanding of planetary science. Its reclassification as a dwarf planet in 2006 stemmed from not meeting all the criteria set by the IAU, particularly the requirement to clear its neighborhood. Despite this, Pluto remains an active area of scientific study with discoveries like its five moons and possible subsurface ocean revealing its complexity. As our knowledge of the universe grows, so too must our definitions and perspectives. Pluto's story reminds us that science is a dynamic process, continually refining our understanding of the cosmos. It challenges us to embrace change and remain curious, for the universe still holds countless mysteries waiting to be unraveled. In our own way, we are all Pluto. It may not be a planet anymore, but it's still special for exactly what it is, both in this universe and to each one of us. A rose by any other name would smell just as sweet, and a planet by any other name would still be just as compelling and would still call out to us, demanding to be known. Thanks for watching this video, and see you next time.